Thank you Coding Dojo for sponsoring today's video. Let's talk about the best NFTs that money can buy today. Let's print some tendies because at the beginning who, of this who year in buy January, these things, the these NFTs? Roughly $17 million Wait, what? worth of NFTs. But fast forward to today, and the market million has dollars? Is worth $27 billion, where we're exchanging roughly $2 billion a month. This is because $2 billion? The result of the crypto boom that we saw in 2021. In fact, even celebrities have started buying into it. People like John, stop what you're doing. We're making NFTs. Well, what is an NFT? and approach is about flipping NFTs for profit and eventually making money. And the endless speculation on what's going to be the next hyped up oh, NFT. That's us. And that's where the scam is. Whoa. But there's this whole what? John? Stop what you're doing. Don't launch. Well, technically coding an NFT wasn't that easy. Let me explain how it went. About a week ago, I decided that the best way to review the new M1 MacBook Pro 14 inch was by coding a project. And of course, because I love to torture myself, I literally spent hours learning about Ethereum, smart contracts and NFTs, all in order to show you guys how great of a laptop this can be. The matter of the fact is that using Chrome, Linux, VS Code, and the terminal intensively, I couldn't skip on this opportunity to give you a proper hardware and performance review of the new MacBook Pro. To get into the flow of things, most of the time I do enjoy working with AirPods. I often find myself using one switch and connecting them through there, but because I was going to go on a massive Chrome search, I decided it was best to use its 3.5mm jack to use my Audio Technicas. The first thing I needed to learn was what Ethereum is, how it works, what smart contracts are, and how NFTs are related to all of it. Of course, because I'm a mess with the way I search, I typically have about 20 to 30 tabs open on Chrome at all times, trying to understand all these concepts. Often searching about crypto and NFTs leads to super sketchy websites, and for safety reasons, I do like having this webcam slider. For those who worry, I've had this for a while and it doesn't seem to want to break my screen, so I typically just never worry about it. Naturally, with the way I was searching, I finally got to query the big question, how to code an NFT. After finding a couple of good blog posts and a few YouTube videos helping me understand the process, I was ready to tackle my own little NFT project. But things were about to get heated when mixing all of these apps needed to get this done, including the millions of Chrome tabs I had open. Development wise, the first thing I did was skim through a Solidity crash course with VS Code in order to learn the basics. With this, I was able to understand the basic syntax of how I can structure my smart contracts in order to comply to the ERC721 standard, aka NFTs. But when it comes to developing and deploying such contracts, it's important to do it with the help of a development tool. In my case, I decided to use Hardhat just cause their documentation was super easy to understand. I also decided to use React.js because I wanted to use it as a client to mint my NFT once it was deployed on our test network. And to be honest with you guys, initializing this whole project and installing all the dependencies needed for it on the MacBook was flawless. I also made sure to connect it to a GitHub repo to avoid losing my progression. Running hardhat allowed me to have a proper config file generated and I was able to obtain my Solidity Contracts folder along the script folder that I was going to use to deploy to the network later. Oh, and I love VS Code, I mean being able to install a Solidity extension is super clutch. However, here's where things got complicated for me. Essentially, we needed to obtain some fake ether to test smart contracts since at deployment it cost some gas fees. But to obtain such coins, we needed to download MetaMask, create an account, and choose a testnet. So after spending some time trying to find a service that would run a client with a node to deploy my smart contracts to a supported MetaMask test network, I decided that Infura was going to take care of deploying to the Robston testnet. But here's where things took a quick turn and I really pushed this Mac to its limits. 
To obtain some RETH for Rapsden, I needed to find a faucet to allow myself to receive some coins. Well, it turns out that after putting my wallet address in such faucet, there were a bunch of bots clogging the transaction system. So I'm not quite sure what I'm gonna do. Literally all the tutorials and blogs guide you towards using a Robston faucet. I didn't give up though, I went on Chrome and I luckily found an article explaining how to mine RETH on Ubuntu, which meant I had to create a VM with UTM. I allocated about 250 gigabytes for the testnet to download locally on this machine and 16 gigabytes of RAM to speed things up. I installed an Ubuntu server and later converted it into a proper Ubuntu UI OS. Luckily, because M1 has overall a great CPU, I used it to mine these coins. And yes, even while running this through a VM, the power of M1 will not lack. Once my VM was all set up, I created a node with Geth, downloaded the current state of the Robson blockchain. One eternity later. Oh God, so I think this is gonna take about a couple of hours. Uh, the MacBook is currently about 45% in terms of battery life. And there's 12 million blocks on the Robstein blockchain, and we are at 1.5 million. So yeah. Ubuntu definitely froze on me a couple of times, but other than that, the MacBook never had a problem running the OS, until I of course decided to try to code at the same time, which eventually led to maximizing my RAM's utilization. This is where the fans were kicking in, yielding temperatures of about 88 degrees, but the chassis truly never got hot and I figured that this was the hottest this laptop was going to get. I do think opting for 32 gigabytes of RAM in this case came in super clutch, but if you aren't going to do such heavy work, you won't need it. After my node was up to date with the network, I was able to open a second terminal window, attach a miner to the node, and allow my miner to mine some RETH. Within a few minutes, I got myself a good amount of coins to be able to test and deploy my smart contracts. And so for me, here's where I was able to go back to VS Code, properly configure my hard hat file with some environmental variables because they were going to interact with my wallet and my blockchain service of choice. I compiled the default greeting smart contract hard hat supplied and deployed it to Infura. Luckily, to verify that it was indeed on the testnet, with the help of Etherscan, I did see that my smart contract was indeed deployed, so I could essentially use React.js to interact with it in order to test. At this point, the MacBook was dying, and I mean, even though we had 50% of the work done, I couldn't blame it, so I decided to call it a day and charge it. Other than obsessing at night on our couch about NFTs and how to write smart contracts, I started brushing up on my React.js skills through Coding Dojo. Coding Dojo is a global technology education company that offers three full stack coding bootcamps. Whether you want to learn the leading industry Python tools, their full Java stack to eventually work in things such as server apps at the financial services, or even learn Mern to create awesome e-commerce websites, Coding Dojo can allow you to maximize your career opportunities and have the chance to dive deep into software development, data science, and even cybersecurity. And I love their UI UX web platform that provides great courses to learn from. Their curriculum is very well designed to make this your first and last bootcamp you'll ever attend, so you can start tackling projects and truthfully learn even more by doing. If it's of interest to you, you can download their course packet and check out exactly what you will be learning. I did personally attend their online session and had access to multiple of their classes. They deliver hands-on and structured teaching, which will help you to develop your coding skills a lot quicker, and I honestly thought the online learning experience was far superior from when I was attending my computer science classes online at university. Don't worry though, if you can attend full-time, you also have the ability to do it part-time if it's a career change you're thinking of. Plus, after graduation, Coding Dojo ensures they're always there for you by being able to reach out to your career service managers again to reorient you and find the most suitable career in the industry. Look, I've learned by doing, but I've also realized you need the proper guidance to grow into self-sufficiency so you can learn how to be a developer. If React.js or other technologies interest you in order to be able to build, say, your own NFTs, I think you guys should check out Coding Dojo to develop your coding skills and learn technologies quickly, just like I did on this review. The next day for me was all about creating a proper ERC721 token and find a way to test it so I could eventually allow my React application to interact with it. With a full battery charge, the plan was to code a smart contract to mint our NFT and store it in our MetaMask wallet. Look, don't get me wrong, coding for so long on this 14 inch screen is not bad at all. My code tends to span a good amount on a single line, but when it doesn't, it forces me to write better code. Regardless, I decided it was best to connect it 
through our monitors to give myself some room to code the rest. And this is where for me, the new MacBook Pros really shine. It's not a must, but it's definitely a plus having proper ports. And I love the fact we get an HDMI next to this USB-C port for a triple setup with a dock. Thanks to Stack Overflow, I did find a guy mentioning an online code editor called Remix that allows you to quickly test smart contracts. And because last night on the couch, I realized that Open Zeppelin is a library for smart contract development, I use its wizard to check some features we wanted and fill some parameters for our own NFT. By opening this up on Remix with the help of the Open Zeppelin dogs and a couple of hours in my hand, we eventually created a super simple ERC721 smart contract that was mintable and finite. Literally finite, like you can only mint one NFT. Remix was a life savior because I was able to test some simple function calls that were soon enough going to be called through React. But how could I establish such interface to communicate with our smart contract living on the testnet? Well, Ethers JS was the answer to all our problems. Remember the default greeting smart contract we had deployed through Hardhat? I decided to use its previous deployment address and create some functions within my React app to interact with its existing functions. By using YouTube and Ethers documentation, I eventually learned how to instantiate a contract in JavaScript and interact with it. I did realize that my audio engine speakers weren't connected to the machine. There's so we pass the contract address, the NBI, and the provider object that we created before. To be fair, the speakers with the lid closed don't sound too bad. However, I needed to add these speakers as our third Bluetooth device. Up to now, there was no overheating, laptop didn't feel hot when docked, and it clearly showed in the temperature monitors. On the top monitor, I did realize something. On my own custom Solidity contract, I realized that we had a base URI function. From the hundreds of videos I consumed the day before, I remember that base URIs are the ones responsible for your NFT metadata. In other words, the data responsible for displaying your NFT information on a website like OpenSea. And so I needed to find a service that would host my NFT image and its JSON file. But we had an issue. We technically didn't have an NFT image. So I put John to work and with the iPad Air, he created a quick NFT. He airdropped it on the MacBook and I uploaded it to a service called Piñata where I was able to host a JSON file and its image. It does seem like Apple have somehow figured out how to prevent Bluetooth interference with so many devices connected. All this time, I've been rocking my Logitech peripherals and my audio engine speakers which never caused any issues, not even input lags. In spite of that, I was fed up and wanted to use my ultra wide along the MacBook to finish up this whole project and a USB-C cable was simply enough for it. Here's where my React app started to evolve to communicate with my own smart contract. Although I needed to make sure I had installed the Open Zeppelin library through NPM, recompiled Hardhat with a new contract, and deployed to Robsten. From here, I developed two methods, one that would allow me to mint and the other one that would allow me to check the owner of the NFT. But this took a while, mainly because I couldn't figure out how to send Ether to a payable method that required arguments like my address and our metadata living in Piñata. Eventually, I found a blog post with my issue and I was able to send a payable transaction to the network using my MetaMask Ether that we mined the day before on Ubuntu. Of course, I checked it through Etherscan and I was super happy to know that my contract was indeed online. I then proceeded to grab the contract hash and I imported it as a token that was automatically recognized on MetaMask. And I was finally able to have my own little NFT token on my MetaMask wallet. So, oh, we have a bit of a problem. If we want to deploy to a testnet, OpenSea doesn't really uh, deploy to Robston. Ah, great. You can only imagine the face I made when I discovered this, and so I started typing away to learn how to use the RingKB testnet without throwing my work away. Typing on this keyboard, guys, is just great. Even when I'm pissed, I use the arrow keys all the time to traverse my code with no problem. I never found myself once clicking on the wrong keys, so no, they aren't annoyingly small. The travel on this continues to be super great, and I love the size of the trackpad. I have enough space to track files, and I navigate my editor super quickly. So quick that, well, with 
within 10 minutes, I realized I only had to change a few lines of code to work with Renki B, and luckily, I found a faucet to receive Ether from. With this, we redeployed to Renki B, minted a smart contract, confirmed the transaction, added our token, and pasted our contract address to OpenSea. As you can see, it took about four tries to get the metadata working because I had forgotten to add the column to the HTTPS, but we eventually got our NFT to the test market. I didn't want to deploy this to the mainnet with Infura because I don't want anyone to be wasting money on this. There's so little to say about this MacBook because everything you throw at it, it handles it well. My experience with it working on a brand new project with new technologies was great and I honestly have zero complaints. Battery life is awesome and for some reason it seems to be doing better than before. I do think this is still overkill and I highly suggest you check out the Air prior to this. I am most certain that even running Ubuntu and mining Ether would be perfect. The only thing is that at least a 16GB model would be required, mainly because Geth recommends at least 8GB of RAM within your VM to mine. But look, if you have the money, this will last you for years to come and you won't need to buy a separate adapter for dual displays. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll allow you to truly experience the new MacBook as developers. It's time for my new screen to get a proper review. Take care.